everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the notification bell, subscribe to the channel, and please comment in the below. Before I... Hit that begin, like button and sus subscribe. Yeah, do as Stevie D says and subscribe or he's going to kick your ass. Isn't that right, Stevie? Mm. Mm. All right. How you Looking doing, man? You. What's happening? How are you? I'm pretty good. Hey, I got to apologize to uh, Stevie here. I was uh, an, a, an hour late. He called me, and um, it's the, the the reason is, Stevie, is that... Uh, uh, tell a different time. You're on a different uh, watch, huh? Well, we're on a different time zone, but I still can't do basic math. I knew there was three hours difference, and you know, as you know, Canada is a bit behind. We um, just um, we just came on board with the 24-hour clock. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we don't use the 24 o'clock, 24 hour clock either. So. Oh, okay. So, Perfect. It's all good. We're here. You Living know. in the moment, right? Yeah. That's, that's what we do, right? That's what we do. Uh, friends of Bill. So thanks for joining me, Stevie. I've been a big fan of your guitar playing for decades. Um, I've interviewed uh, your boss. I don't know why I shouldn't say that. Josh, anyways, a few times I thought I'd get one of the main songwriters of the band as well on Stevie D. Um, what are you doing these days uh, besides playing guitar? I understand um, you're going country? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've i been working with this kid out of uh, the top part of Florida there, uh, a country guy. His name is Gen Z, J-E-N-S-E-Y. And uh, he's... Uh, it's kind of a punk rocker meets Johnny Cash meets uh, a whole bunch of other classic outlaw country. And uh, I'm having fun doing it. And uh, and he's out there uh, like five nights a week in saloons singing his heart out. You know, great guy. Saloons. I love that. Um, it's yeah. kind of a romantic, uh, you know, when you think of the... Um tumbleweed coming across um the dusty yeah. road in front of sam the elliott at the uh yeah sam elliott the actor. Kid, yeah with that sexy low voice yeah. <laughs> well he doesn't turn me on but hey oh <laughs> you were talking about something before we yourself. came live uh, was that speak for yourself that's right that's right so in the background you're talking about my flintstones uh background i like yours but you told me a funny story tell me that story about uh was it a tiktok reel or something i i don't know what it, what it started on but i i saw it on instagram and somebody posted a reel of an instagram meeting fail or not uh, a zoom meeting fail and there were all the boxes uh, all the the people in the meeting and this one guy had a Halloween filter around him. And uh the leader of the meeting was was like, Hey John, can you take can you take that filter off? It's a little distracting. He goes, Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'll uh, uh I just wanted to get in the spirit of the season. And he takes it off, and then you can see the room, and there's this like two foot dildo behind him. <laughs> He's like, Oh, uh, knocks it off the, the 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 bed you know you know what that's kind of probably karma for the guy uh, running the zoom meeting that wants to be in control right everybody everybody you know in the meeting is like oh oh they start laughing the leader <laughs> of the meeting's like oh what, what does he do at that point does he go and then remove it or is he put back on his halloween gear what do you do right well and he was he was reaching for it to like nonchalantly get it out of the picture so, yeah, and then it was on his nightstand, and he and he just kind of like sweeps it onto the floor. Like, uh, there's no like, way that meeting went off with people paying attention. There's no way. And no, then, no, people saw, people saw it right away. So you, I mean, I wonder if one of the if that was kind of a work Zoom meeting, and the guy had to go to the office like twice a week. Yeah, that that's what it looked like. It looked like oh, a man. Yeah. Have you seen the one with uh, uh, the Zoom meeting? And the guy um, is like, he thinks he's turning off his camera, but uh, he's probably just hitting his mute button. And then uh, he gets out the tissues and the lotion. Oh, no. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Social media and, the, and free Zoom apps. I mean, they're the destruction uh, of us all, right? They, but, 
<laughs> he was like, you know, and there was a girl in the meeting like, John, John, your camera's still on. John, John. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, the other guys in the meeting are like, oh, no way. Oh. <laughs> you know? and, and that guy's got to go to work the next day, too. Yeah, well, it's not like, you know, he's the only one doing that. No, know? no, but I think he, he was the he, only... He, you know, he, de he definitely was the only one that got caught that day. He's an exhibitionist. So let's talk music. Um, I love your guitar playing, your style. Uh, some of my favorite songs, I mean, um, Butterfly was probably my favorite album so far, but Don't Go Away is one of my favorite. It's just your melodic songwriting. I was just watching you with Nikki Six from an interview five years ago and how you explain you can shred, but you're not a shredder. You you play with emotion. And, and one of the main things I took away from that interview was tonality and um and vibrato so who influenced you uh growing up uh to give you the stevie d style that in 40 years kids are going to talk about who influenced you about well, buck cherry stevie d obviously who did it for you i i think out of the gate i was influenced excuse me coffee um i was influenced by you know the what was going on in my neighborhood uh there was this guy named jim mcclellan who was a huge Angus Young fan. Um, there was this guy named Joe, who was a big Hendrix fan. And I I, I latched on to J Hendrix. So it was, uh, and what was going on in my house is uh, my brother was listening to a lot of Led Zeppelin. So, you know, Jimmy Page, Angus Young, Jimi Hendrix, those were my guys at the starting blocks. And that grew into uh, Randy Rhodes, Eddie Van yeah. Halen, and 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 guys of that era. And then um, it was all about scales and modes and how fast I could play. And then I got booed off the stage uh, in Chicago for playing like that. I was at the blues club at the Kingston Mines, and uh, I got booed off the stage because. I was playing, you know, Ingve licks over Stormy Monday. And right. uh once I got booed, it was it was traumatic for me. And uh I swore I'd never play like that again. I went backwards and went and played. Uh I got into the blues and I I I, I gatewayed through Stevie Ray Vaughan, found the three kings, uh Freddie King, BB King, and uh Albert King. And and uh, and really started working on feel at that point, and uh, and phrasing. I think that's uh, definitely important. Is you know obviously because once you know that you can shred, you don't need to prove it anymore. And I think a lot of guitar players, I, I my personal opinion, I thought that Ingve evolved eventually. I thought he was doing you know obviously his first two albums were just dy dynamic, but yeah, it was just a lot of speed. But then I actually heard, and I, I haven't found it since. It was like a live solo of him on YouTube. And he went into and he played like uh, a long solo. But then in the middle of the solo, is like about a 44-second piece in blues. And I was like, yeah, he sold I mean, me. Like, you know, like Ingve, you know, I I don't care for him much as a, his, his personality. Uh, I met him at a NAMM show years ago. He's kind of a douchebag. But... Yes! <laughs> yes! DVD from Buck Cherry. Please like and subscribe to Border City Rock Talk. Uh, yeah, I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> Honest, you know what, Stevie? Honesty is uh, the best policy, right? It shows that you're not phony. So, um, yeah. So, so yeah, like love him or hate him, uh, the guy can play, and and the sh you know the, the the his brand of shredding is is. Uh, the way he does it, I mean, a lot of guys can play fast, but he does it with uh, with style, and he's got there's soul in there if you listen. Um, 
and now shredding is at a all new level with YouTube and uh, YouTubers uh, making careers out of just playing out of their studio home studios or bedrooms. You know, it's it's unbelievable the the heights these players are getting to. So, um, I I I I feel like I I found my my niche, and uh, you know I'm just a a rock and roller. I like to play rock and roll. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's honest. Um, do you think? And I've always thought about this in the last so many years that the technology you got digital delay so whenever you hit like 16 notes in a half a second or two it can almost make it multiply times two so a lot of these shredders are you thinking or is it just me thinking okay they are great they are fast but with technology it just umps it to an octave that it wouldn't be natural without the delay no i mean like nuno does some delay stuff but it's it's really cool i mean he uses the the delay as uh Kind of a texture that who was that i didn't hear you you know betancourt oh 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 no 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 betancourt yeah extreme yeah kind of like like he does some things that that's part of his 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 it's in his trick bag you know mm -hmm. but i mean he not to say that he can't do those notes without the delay i don't know delay I, the, the way the players are playing now the delay or not it they are just on on they're in the stratosphere on, on how good they are. So, and it, could, it could be the technology of guitars too, right? Because the action gets lower it, and all of those things. Of day, it, to me, at the end of the day, it's the player. Okay. You know? they're, they, they, these guys put in a lot of man hours into playing um, that fast and that tasty. I mean, they're, they're you know, like there's also guys that are like – and aside from shredding, just using the, the, the acoustics of the guitar as, uh, you know, rhythmic. And those guys are amazing, too. So, yeah, they, they, hit, have, they, they hit the body hard and it brings back a harmonic. There's a note. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're using it for rhythms, you know, like drums. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I can't remember that. Uh, I think he's from Europe and he wears a trench coat and he makes really nice videos and... Uh, uh, Jack the Ripper? And, it's just, and he uses all his fingers, and but he oh. also uses uh, the the body of the guitar for uh, percussive, you know, percussive elements. So, um, you know, that's way beyond my pay grade. That's way beyond my scope of of what guitar is. You know, like I'm I'm more I'm more of what's going on with ACDC and Chuck Berry and and those guys. Yeah. Feel good, feel good rock and roll with with blues and emotion. Yeah, like I was saying, um, your your tonality and your soloing and like radio song and like I was talking to Josh before I mentioned him saying like you're not really known for ballads and like this was like years ago that I interviewed him and he pointed out and then I started listening to more and more about Cherry and this is good, something I would say that I think is true with a lot of people when you guys came out with Lit Up and uh, Crazy Bitch. A lot of people would hear those songs and think that's what you guys are about, and that was um, that was the whole that was all that was all on the menu. But when I started looking into your catalog of music, like it's so deep, the songwriting and the, and the ballads for sure that I was yeah. actually I went from a a fan to like almost you know diehard. I'm not a cultist, but I mean, it, except for like I didn't realize you guys just released a friggin' album in, in the summer. That's honesty. <laughs> so yeah, you guys are deep and I and I love your songwriting, man. I, I think it obviously um the band uh is popular for a certain style uh a few songs that were uh charted really high. Um Back then, when Lit Up came out, that was the first self-titled album. That was uh, co-written. Uh, that was Josh and Keith, Keith Nelson. Right. Um, I, 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 I took on more, uh, more writing uh, as when once Fifteen came on, I would uh, contribute a song or two, and then it wasn't until Keith left uh, uh, when we came out with War Paint. Uh, that I, I stepped up and 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 had more of a hand in it, but um, I think the 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 idea of the songwriting has always been you know rock and roll uh, in the same vein as ACDC or Aerosmith. It's it's about a feeling and an energy 
and not so much about any kind of politics or heady kind of notions, you know. So it's yeah. more um, of a good time and positivity. I mean, there's also, uh, I don't know, we, we try and show a little depth with the slower songs. Um, yeah. You know, that we've been told that, that ballads have, you know, there's no place for ballads. Uh, you know, I, I, I never went, I don't think we ever went into uh, songwriting or creating a song with, let's do a ballad. I, I think it, it's just, this is the mood that we're in. This is the kind of emotion that we want to get across. And it's a slower to mid-tempo type of song, you know? Mm -hmm. And they the people in the industry say there's no place for it now, but, you know, we, we our, our fans uh, connect with uh, all the songs. So, uh, you know. Yeah, the industry knows numbers. They don't know the depth of what you guys bring to the personal listener. Like, I mean, yeah. even, even when I saw Josh did that song with Gretchen Wilson, it was like, holy shit, deep, deep, yeah. deep. I couldn't believe it. That's fun. She, she, she was, um, she is a great singer. Um, and at that time, uh, Nashville, um, their doors were more closed, uh, as far as putting rock or rock musicians, uh, on, on, on country radio. Yeah. But, uh, it's loosened up a little bit now, you know. Well, Nashville is like the, the belly of rock now. Like, I mean, everybody I talk to or interview, they're living near Nashville or based near Nashville or Everyone's they record in Nashville. It's almost like the second LA. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the first Nashville, like LA is, I don't know if you ask me, LA is kind of, uh, had its time but with, with the, with the internet. Now you can be anywhere in the world yeah, and, and, and get successful. You can get successful right from your bedroom and, and stay there. That's where a lot of people. We're talking music, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, oh, just thought. Hey, oh. Thought I'd throw that in. I mean, Nashville. A, a lot of music has moved to Nashville. That's no secret. It's been mm -hmm. like that for the last 10, 15 years. So a lot, a lot of music besides country has gone to Nashville. For sure. So, um, so you guys are on a bit of a break. Um, definitely a family man, uh, viewers uh, watching this uh, as I was getting ready because I was late. I realized I didn't really have to jump in the shower and put makeup on because you can't really fix this beast up. But I, I could hear um, Steve in the background talking to his girlfriend and his kids. It was so heart heartwarming. So I, you're obviously really um, focused with your kids. Did you drive them to school today or? Well, yeah, no, I was, yeah. Uh, my son's at school right now, um, but yeah, I that's my routine when I'm home. I, I get up, make breakfast, pack the lunch, off to school, you know. That's so um, today we got an early day. It's all about he's he's really connected with uh, he's really he's been great at uh, he's been pretty athletically inclined. So skateboarding and basketball than in soccer and recently he found uh baseball so there, there's a, a facility here uh right here in woodland hills that uh we've been going to for some private coaching to get him ready for the spring spring season so you might I'm run in you I'm, might I'm a baseball fan what you might run into andrew freeman the last in line his kid's a big baseball fan he's got him a private coach Oh yeah, where where where's where does he live? He's out in in Vegas though. Oh okay. But he yeah, said maybe, he... you know like if if and when he you know if he just decides he wants to move forward and get serious about it and get into club ball where yeah. they travel, um, then uh yeah maybe I'll see him see him out in Vegas. Are you um is is your son uh, musically inclined or is, or is it something he hasn't well, uh, graduated is. to? His pitch is great. Um, and his rhythm's great. Uh, he did a lot more. He sings all the time. And now he, we just had a conversation on the way to school today and he's into hip hop. Ooh. So, um, I obviously have instruments lying around the house. He can, I, I have a drum kit in the garage, an electronic kit in, in here. 
for him to mess around on uh, keyboards. Um, and every now and then I chime in, I'm like, hey, you want to learn this? Do you want to learn, you want to go to singing lessons? And so far it's been, nah, you know, so I don't want to force him because that's what happened to me early on. I was uh, forced into piano and then trumpet and then found guitar and, and even guitar. And then, but I found electric guitar on my own and, and, and rock and roll. So, um, and I kind of wasn't really, when I was forced to do it, I, 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 I didn't like it. So I, I just let him, if he, if he finds music, I'll let him find it on his own and I'll, I'll be supportive and foster whatever instrument or style of music or, you know. He's yeah. In. Well, that'll be natural. I mean, there's something to be said about parenting where you put your kids into this from that for structure at the beginning, and then you find out if they enjoy it and if they want to move forward. If not, then that's, that's fine. Right. Yeah. I'll let them know about all the possibilities, give them all the options and then, uh, and whatever he gravitates t towards, you know, I'll, uh, I'll foster that, you know. Right on. So you're on a bit of a break. Um, when you guys go back out on the road, I think it's November, you're hitting Canada and the I've been States. On the road nonstop since summer, and uh, we're all fried. And uh, so uh, Eric from Skid Row, um, we, we had October booked. And uh, he had to go uh, back to Sweden f for some treatment. So that tour, uh, which is actually headed to Canada, got postponed until March. Right. So we, um, which is a blessing in disguise because we're so tired. Mm -hmm. uh, we resume at the end of November, and we'll be doing U.S. dates with Skid Row. Uh, Midwest and West Coast, and then we break for Christmas, and then when we resume again, we'll be in Key West in Florida, and uh, then we go to UK and Europe. This is all supporting uh, Volume 10, um, which includes a song from a uh, fellow Canuck. Yeah, Canuck. Yeah, uh, Brian Adams. Uh, and uh keith scott who, right, uh, right billy uh the other guitar player in buck cherry is uh good friends with um yeah we decided to uh we, we we were messing around during sound checks and then we we would mess around and play it right before crazy bitch at a live show and people would go nuts especially in in canada right i mean right. people it's it's a good old rock and roll song and people knew every word and would scream it at the top of their lungs and our manager said you know you guys do that great you should put that you know let, let, let's just humor me and do a cut a version of it in the studio and we did and uh we did a buck cherry style you know yeah and it uh it came out great and the video for it's fantastic you go to go to youtube right now okay in search of summer 69 or oh, they don't even have to do that they just go down in the description box below this interview and i'll have it there for you right here that's right man right on um certified or um bona fide or certified i saw that on the bus yeah yeah tell the viewers a bit about that you're what's in Sturgis. how do you pronounce it there what what you're in weren't you in south dakota and, and josh had a bit of an accent and you're talking about you're in a truck stop, and he's talking about American hey, Eagle. Hey, do what now? Um, yeah, when, well, I don't know. This was a few years ago. Yeah, I said that though. And um, it, you know, late night, and we're tired, and we, you you stop at a truck stop, and you get up, and we just started talking like uh, Josh is from Oklahoma. Uh, well, his family's from Oklahoma, and he just. He, he adopts this accent. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. And and uh, and he just starts saying it, the 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 most. I don't know if he's got Tourette's or <laughs> he just he he um he just picks phrases that he repeats over and over and over. I've I've heard some of the same phrases since we were nineteen. Um. 
and I still hear him today. But he 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 just he adopted saying uh, he adopted certify uh, bona fide. You know, like when something's <laughs> cool, like yeah, certify. Okay. You know, like and and so we would all start doing that, and then we made this video, uh, and uh, I don't know, a lot of people. I think it was on a reel I just saw recently. Maybe that's where I found it. Maybe somebody re-uploaded it on a reel. I have to find it. And if I can find it, I'll drop in the links below. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you for that guitar look at the beginning that you did sure. for us. Anytime. That was awesome. Um, I won't keep you much longer. Um, favorite Canadian musician besides Brian Adams or Rush? <laughs> You know, I really like that. I don't know his, <clears throat> I don't know his name, uh, but he plays for Big Wreck. Uh, who's that guitar player, singer? I don't even know either. But he's, he's like he's like the Canadian. Well, he's. I, I'm not going to compare him. Like, like he's talented, like Richie Cotton, talented. You know, oh, right, right, yeah, Richie. Um, but you know that band, Big Wreck. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well, I know the band. I just uh, don't know his name. Amazing. Um, who else do I? I mean, I've, there's got to be tons. Uh, Danko Jones. Yeah, yeah, Danko. Uh, he's, Devin he's Townsend. Fun. Yeah. Huh? Devin Danko. Townsend. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can't think of any right now, but. Uh, yeah, I'll put you on kind of put you on the spot, but no, yeah. that's that's great. I'll uh, I'll put Danko, uh, you know, like. Even just w watching his Instagram, he's a he's a funny guy and and, and music historian and uh, a rock and roll historian anyway, and uh, and uh, just a, a talented guy. Right on. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Everybody do as Stevie D says, and like I said, and like he says, he's gonna kick your ass if you don't subscribe to the channel. You get these great interviews, man. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much. I'll put links and everything down below to um, so people can check out the shows. You're going to be up in my neighborhood in Sioux, Michigan at Kuwait, and I think it's in March. I'll have to go out and see you then. Um, with Skid Row, wasn't there somebody else on that bill? I don't know. Skid Row, there was Skid Row, you guys, and I thought that maybe there was a third band on the bill, but in any event, uh, I'll see you then. Maybe it was uh, Kurt Dimer. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's from he's from Michigan, I think. I didn't know that. I interviewed him, but That's I just from Michigan. But yeah, he's a rocking uh, rocker from. Uh, I think he's living there now. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was from uh, like his dad was in the oil business or something. He told me at one point. Yeah, um, no, he is. He is. Right on. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for your time. Um, Anything you want to say to your uh, your fans, your millions and billions? Hey, on shelf, eh? We're coming up to Canada. Canada, yeah, we're we're on the twenty four hour clock now, so there's no uh, reason now to miss the show. You, uh, stage time is twenty three hundred. See, I know what that is. It's eleven o'clock. Were you in the military at all? No. Okay, because uh, my, uh, there's a few in my family that uh, that were, but uh, I'm not. Well, see, that makes sense because then you don't have to say the same time at, you know, get confused at 6 o'clock. P.M. or A.M.? Okay, it's 1,800 hours. Okay, it's 6 o'clock. Yeah, I had a buddy, um, uh, uh, he's a Marine, and uh, he would tell me, like, yeah, we'll be over there. We'll see you at about 1,400. I'm like... 2 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can do math now, but I couldn't do it earlier today. Uh, Thanks again, Stevie. Uh, right. Thanks for the call, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on the road. All right, buddy. Take care. Bye.